Araku was summoned by a god due to his tragic past where he suffered betrayal and illness for 39 years. The god, feeling sympathy for his sad life, granted Araku a second chance with a healthy body and an additional wish as a bonus. Araku's desire was to be a farmer in his new life, inspired by the shows he watched about farming. The god of the world sought permission from the god of agriculture for Araku to fulfill his wish of becoming a farmer in a place without any other humans around. The request was granted, and along with a healthy body, Haraku received the power of the almighty farming tool. Starting his life as a farmer, Haraku explored his surroundings and tested the capabilities of the almighty farming tool, which could transform into any object he wanted. The tool's passive skill ensured that he never grew tired while using it. Haraku searched for water and successfully dug a well to find it. He quickly learned how to use the tool efficiently, chopping wood to build a small house for himself. However, he faced some challenges, as he couldn't finish building the house in time for nightfall. Nonetheless, he managed to improvise and create wooden dishes by carving a hole in a tree. The next day, he tested the water, started a fire, and while chopping wood again, he encountered and defeated a monster, enjoying rabbit meat for lunch. Araku proceeded to build a toilet and a room for privacy. Eager to grow vegetables, he dug the ground but realized he lacked seeds for fruits and vegetables. That night, to his surprise, he woke up to find plants growing in his fields without the need for seeds. He decided to protect his fields from wild animals and built a shelter. Despite wild rabbits attempting to eat his plants, Haraku successfully defended his crops. He lived on rabbit meat and managed to construct a small hut during these days. Suddenly, two large dogs appeared, appearing injured. Haraku cared for them, providing food and shelter. He noticed that one of the dogs was pregnant and took extra care of her, making sure she and the puppies were warm and well-fed. With the dogs as his companions, Haraku's life as a farmer became more eventful and fulfilling. The plants continued to grow without the need for seeds, and Haraku enjoyed the peacefulness of his secluded farm. The next day, Haraku was delighted to find the puppies healthy and fed the two dogs meat. Over the following days, he constructed a new house and lived with his dogs, Yuki and Kuro, who proved to be valuable companions in guarding the vegetable fields and hunting for meat. This marked the beginning of Haraku's peaceful life as a farmer in the new world. As days passed, Haraku discovered how to grow various types of vegetables by simply imagining them, and the plants appeared quickly and in abundance. However, he faced challenges in cultivation and had much to learn as a farmer. He expressed his gratitude to the gods who granted him this new life by creating statues in their honor. Haraku felt his food lacked flavor and realized he needed spices. As time went on, he also cultivated fruits and spent enjoyable moments playing with his evolving dogs, who helped him explore the forest where he discovered a river. Deciding to establish a water supply for his settlement, Haraku began construction work to increase his arable land and sustain crop growth. As winter approached, he prepared himself, but the fur of wild animals proved unusable due to its smell. One day, a giant spider named Zabatan appeared, showing impressive skills in creating clothes. Haraku welcomed the spider into his settlement, where it continued to make clothes and other items he desired. During the winter, Haraku felt lonely without someone to talk to. When spring arrived, the puppies grew and found partners in the forest. Zabatan also surprised them with children after winter. Knowing he needed more food production, Haraku expanded his arable fields. While cultivating the fields, Haraku's pets alerted him, and Kuro led him into the forest. Haraku spotted a little girl, and his dogs threatened her. He intervened, stopping the dogs and offering her his jacket. However, the girl unexpectedly bit Haraku on the neck, transforming into her true form as a vampire. Once realizing that she meant no harm, Haraku offered her his blood to regain her strength. The vampire girl, Lu, appreciated his help and spent the day with him, being impressed by his unique vegetables. She revealed that she was hunted by nobles and sought refuge in the forest. Lu asked to stay longer to research his plants, and Haraku, feeling lonely, asked if she would like to live with him forever. Misunderstanding his intention as a proposal, Lu hesitated initially, but when Haraku clarified, she happily accepted his genuine proposal. As they lived together, Lu's magical abilities improved their lives, and she taught Haraku how to obtain salt to enhance his meals. The settlement gradually grew into a village. One day, an angel arrived in the forest, and Haraku's pets attacked her. He freed the angel, named Tia, and learned that Lu had a bounty on her head due to her explosive experiments with medicines. Lu explained that her actions weren't intentional and revealed that she ran into the forest to escape from Tia's pursuit. Afterward, Lu asked Tia if she would like to live with them in Haraku's settlement. She then showed Tia around the village fields and introduced her to the spider Sabathan, causing Tia to faint in fear. When Tia regained consciousness, Haraku showed her the types of vegetables he had planted. They all enjoyed a meal together, with Haraku seasoning his salad with salt. Later, they harvested vegetables until the evening, and Haraku felt envious of Lu and Tia's ability to purify themselves with magic. In the evening, they asked Tia if she had a good day, and Lu suggested that Tia should live with them in the village. 
In the following days, they harvested delicious vegetables and fruits, and Tia helped Haraku expand the village. During a walk, Haraku noticed that his dogs, Yuki and Kuro, had given birth to new puppies, and he decided to build a bigger dog house for them. Additionally, he wanted to come up with names for the puppies. Meanwhile, some of Zabatan's children bid farewell to Haraku. Later, Tia expressed her wish to leave the village temporarily for some errands. A few days later, she returned with a group of high elves from the Lee family, who explained that their village was destroyed in a war, leaving them homeless. Haraku welcomed the high elves to his village. When the elves were introduced to Haraku's pets, the giant spider Zabatan and the infernal wolves, they all fainted in fear as they realized these were dangerous monsters. After that, they built houses and toilets. The high elves were impressed by Haraku's strength and his ability to cut down a tree. Ten days later, the house of the elves was completed, and Haraku felt a bit down as it was much nicer than his small hut. However, he hoped that the high elves would feel comfortable in the village. As the elves settled in, Haraku realized that his knowledge of elves from his previous life was incorrect. They were not vegetarians and possessed blacksmithing skills. Subsequently, Haraku built a furnace, and the elves made cooking pots. Haraku was delighted with the cooking pots made by the elves. The elves expressed their gratitude for finding a new home and mentioned their plans to focus on starting families. Haraku hesitated to explain the process of making babies, as he didn't want to share such information with the innocent elves. In the following days, they lived together, and Haraku baked bread for everyone to try. When he wanted to expand the fields for new plants, he realized he didn't know who owned the land where he founded the village. Lu informed him that it technically belonged to the demon lord, but since Haraku built everything on the land himself, he was now the owner. In the evenings, the women admired Haraku's ability to grow delicious vegetables and tame strong monsters like the Inferno Wolf and Demon Spider. Zabatan caught a giant queen bee, and Haraku built a small bee home for her, looking forward to the honey they would produce. Haraku then decided to build a water reservoir and, with the help of an elf, figured out how to transport water from the river to the village. The high elves assisted Haraku with the construction, completing the water supply quickly. Fresh fish were also discovered during the process, and Haraku grilled them, surprising everyone with their delicious taste. Haraku continued to expand his agricultural endeavors, planting rice in a paddy field with the help of the Leia elves. The rice was harvested and processed, and Haraku made delicious rice balls that everyone loved. Later, he built a bathhouse and found a way to dispose of sewage using cute, harmless slimes to clean the water. While chopping wood, Haraku also attempted to grow edible mushrooms. After preparing the bathhouse, Haraku had to show the girls how to use it properly. However, when he got into the tub, all the women joined him, making Haraku feel shy and unable to relax in the presence of so many pretty women. The next morning, Haraku's edible mushrooms grew, and his inferno wolves found five more elves with names starting with Law. These elves were fortunate to live in Haraku's village. We then learn about Kuro's past life. He lived alone in a dangerous forest until he met Yuki, who defeated him in a fight and made him fall in love with her. They had puppies, but unfortunately, they were attacked by a powerful bear, leaving them injured and unable to hunt for food. That's when they met Haraku, who showed kindness and strength by helping them. Life with Haraku began, and shortly after, Kuro's puppies were born, and Haraku took care of them. More powerful women appeared in the village, and Haraku led them. Kuro knew Haraku had an almighty risk power, but he wondered if Haraku was aware that Kuro was an inferno wolf and not a regular dog. Nevertheless, Kuro enjoyed spending time with Haraku. After that, Haraku built a new house, amazed by the space it offered. He had a great view of the giant tree in the village from his new home. He was delighted about the construction done by the high elves and placed statues of Kuro and Yuki outside his new house. The next day, Haraku planned to cook curry but needed spices. He showed Lu and Tia new plants ready to be harvested with his almighty farming tool and planted delicious spices. He also demonstrated different types of vegetables, which Lu and Tia turned into spices using their magic. Interestingly, when Haraku showed his dogs coriander, they ran away as they couldn't stand the smell, and Tia found it fascinating that infernal wolves don't like coriander. After harvesting the black pepper and cayenne pepper, Haraku now had all the spices he needed for his special curry. The kind-hearted elf, Lee, eagerly offered her assistance in the kitchen, and together, they set about preparing the mouth-watering dish. Araku patiently showed Lee the art of cooking the curry, and its irresistible aroma soon drew a curious crowd to the scene. As they neared completion, Araku realized that a perfect accompaniment to the curry would be some freshly baked naan bread. So, with nimble hands, he prepared the dough, and Lee skillfully rolled it out. The crowd grew larger, marveling at the delightful sight of Haraku and Lee's culinary expertise. Finally, the naan bread emerged golden and puffy from the oven, perfectly complementing the fragrant curry. Everyone gathered around as Haraku graciously served the delicious meal to his friends and the villagers. The taste was extraordinary, and it quickly disappeared from their plates. Smiles of delight spread across their faces as they savored the delightful flavors. As winter approached, Haraku and his friends took measures to prepare for the cold season. 
They gathered firewood to keep warm and preserved meat with Tia and Lu's magical abilities to ensure they had enough food throughout the winter. During the cozy winter evenings, Haraku's creative spirit came to life as he invented various games for everyone to enjoy. They laughed and bonded over their friendly competitions, relishing the warmth of camaraderie in the chilly weather. With the arrival of spring, the days began to lengthen, and Haraku decided it was time to wake Sabaton, his giant spider companion, from hibernation. However, their peaceful moment was interrupted when an unexpected wyvern swooped down, unleashing its fiery breath on the village. Haraku's protective instincts kicked in, and he summoned his almighty farming tool to create a formidable spear. The villagers watched in awe as he bravely faced the wyvern in a fierce battle. After a hard-fought encounter, Haraku emerged victorious, having defeated the wyvern. The villagers celebrated his bravery and strength, grateful for his presence in their community. Curiosity arose about the rarity of wyverns, prompting the question of whether someone had sent it to attack them. Determined not to waste the meat, Haraku proposed a plan to savor the wyvern's flesh. He skillfully prepared a delectable wyvern steak and served it alongside delightful side dishes. Everyone relished the unique delicacy, savoring the rare flavor. As they enjoyed their meal, Lu playfully questioned Tia about deflecting Haraku's powerful spear attack, but they both knew his strength was beyond compare. In the Demon Palace, General Bezel reported to the other demon generals about the defeat of a wyvern by unknown individuals. Meanwhile, the dragon Drime witnessed the attack from his cave and his assistant warned him that even Drime wouldn't survive an encounter with Haraku. The next morning, Haraku decided to make alcohol, and the elves were excited about the idea. They harvested grapes, and Haraku built a grape processing device. While the girls stomped on the grapes, Tia stumbled, and they all laughed and sang as they worked together to make wine. In the evening, they had many barrels of crushed grapes, and the joyful atmosphere continued. In the heavenly realm, the goddess of agriculture scolded the god of the worlds for sending Haraku to the dangerous forest of death and gifting him with a replica of the Holy Land's grime. She was upset that a normal human was exposed to such dangers and that the powerful weapon could drain his life energy if he didn't have a healthy body. The god of the worlds was punished by his daughter for his actions. The next day, Haraku encountered another little vampire girl named Flora in the forest, who turned out to be Lu's little sister. Flora was initially disrespectful towards Haraku, but Kuro, Haraku's wolf companion, intervened and demanded an apology. Flora later learned about Haraku being Lu's husband and grew fond of the village and its delicious food. A month later, Flora returned with an army of maids, led by Anne, from the ogre breed, and cows. Tia, realizing she had no peers, brought reinforcements, including three angel guardians and lizardmen who brought chickens. The maids quickly took care of the household tasks, but their food lacked taste. Haraku then taught them new cooking skills, and they were delighted to learn from him. Then, the three angels under Tia's command ensured the safety of the village and regularly patrolled the forest. Haraku looked after the lizardmen, who helped accelerate the construction work in his growing village. To differentiate them, he noticed that the leader of the lizardmen wore a red bandana around his arm. As the village's population grew, an elf approached Haraku, showing him another group of elves they had found in the forest. To celebrate the establishment of the village, Haraku wanted to choose a name and brainstormed ideas with his friends. Zabatan's suggestion inspired him, and they settled on the name The Great Tree Village, which everyone loved. The villagers wanted Haraku to be their mayor, and a joyous celebration followed. During the festivities, an alarm sounded, and an angel reported the arrival of a demon from the Demon Palace. Demon General Bezel introduced himself, and Haraku, being the mayor, offered to pay taxes to the Demon Lord. A contract was agreed upon, where Haraku would give 10% of their annual harvest as tax payment. After the deal was concluded, Haraku's village became officially protected by the demons. The girls and Lu were impressed with Haraku's ability to negotiate such a favorable deal, and Lu was delighted with the powerful potion gift from Bezel. On the other side, the demon generals were pleased that Haraku became their ally, having powerful allies like Vampire Lu and the Angel Tia. They were cautious of Haraku's village, which had formidable warriors and dangerous monsters. However, they were relieved to have reached a peaceful resolution. The next day, the giant dragon, Drime, appeared, bearing a sword as a gift for Haraku. Grime's servant told Haraku that they were neighbors. Haraku invited Drime to his village, where the dragon turned into a human. After a fun time together, Drime's servant thanked them for the hospitality and took him back home. Haraku had an idea to build a new house for visitors, and the elves volunteered to construct one for 30 people, anticipating large groups of visitors. They planned a welcoming protocol, taking into account the various creatures and beings in the village. Flora was assigned to help with security at night. The next day, visitors from Howling Village arrived. Haraku's village welcomed them, but Tia sensed other people hiding in their group. The Inferno Wolves captured the second group, and Garf apologized, promising not to cause any trouble again. Haraku then wanted to serve them delicious food, but Tia and Anne were more cautious due to the guests' intentions. 
Haraku felt concerned about the visitors from Howling Village, and Tia advised him to be cautious. Though he couldn't entirely trust them, Haraku decided to at least serve them wine. During their conversation, he learned that Howling Village consisted of five different settlements, mostly inhabited by beastmen. They earned their livelihood through hunting, mining, and previously trading with humans until some problems arose. Araku realized that Howling Village could be a potential trading partner for his village, the Great Tree Village. They discussed the possibilities of exchanging goods with each other, and Garf, the beastman leader, was interested in the idea. The two villages then agreed to conduct their first trade, and Tia, accompanied by a group of lizardmen, went to Howling Village. As Howling Village's fear of Haraku's pets, Zabatan and his Inferno Wolves, began to subside. They sent some villagers, mostly female beastmen, to live in the Great Tree Village. Initially nervous, the new arrivals discovered that the villagers were kind and welcoming. Haraku was envious that everyone in the village, even the children, could use magic except for him. He visited the villagers using magic to cultivate plants and observe their unique magical abilities. Even the pets had impressive magical skills, leaving him amazed. However, Sina assured him that the young boys were yet to develop their magical abilities. While harvesting apples, dangerous monsters caused an earthquake. Grand Maria informed Haraku about two powerful monsters fighting near the village. Haraku decided to confront them with Grand Maria's help. Araku, with his almighty farming tool, defeated two enormous monsters, leaving Kuro and the angels astonished by his power. He then used the bear meat to cook a stew with wine, which saddened the girls since they had hoped to enjoy the wine separately. However, everyone loved Haraku's delicious snake dish, perfectly suited to their tastes. Araku sought Flora's help with medicine, and she provided various healing potions, for which he thanked her. Discovering that their miso production was facing challenges, Araku encouraged Flora not to give up. The next day, he collected chicken eggs and taught Flora how to make mayonnaise. They continued the cooking lesson, and Flora also learned how to prepare miso. Together, they successfully made kofi. Soon, visitors arrived at Haraku's village, a group of dwarves led by Donovan. They desired wine but lacked money to purchase it. In response, Donovan offered their technology to improve alcohol production in exchange for the wine. The girls were delighted with this proposal, and the dwarves moved into the village. A welcome party was thrown for the dwarves and the previously mentioned beastmen. During the festivities, Drime greatly enjoyed Donovan's strong whiskey, and Haraku had a friendly conversation with him, inquiring about his preferences when it came to women. Donovan humorously admitted a fondness for older women with beards. In the days that followed, another dragon appeared, and Haraku was prepared to face it. However, Drime intervened and attacked the dragon, revealing the involvement of Drime's daughter, Elastis Moon, and his wife, Grafaloon, in causing the previous misunderstandings. Drime's frequent sneaking away to party at Haraku's village had led to jealousy and misconceptions. Haraku empathized with Drime's family and even Drime's family scolded Drime for the misunderstanding. However, the issue was resolved through apologies, and Grafaloon realized Haraku's true character and power. Last moon, Drime's daughter acknowledged that she owed her life to the demon spider in Haraku's village, as it had saved her from Haraku's attack. Due to the safe and welcoming environment, Grafaloon decided that Lasty should live in Big Tree Village to ensure peaceful relations between the dragons and the villagers. Haraku showed Lasty around the village and realized she possessed overwhelming power, unintentionally causing destruction. Unsure of her suitable role, he noticed that her dragon aura frightened everyone. Eventually, Lasty took charge of diplomatic relations for the village. Bielsa, a demon general, was shocked to learn about Lasty living in Haraku's village. Fearful, he decided to buy fruit to avoid trouble. Bielsa then sent his daughter, Florum, to investigate the village and assess its fighting power. Using invisibility, she explored the village, amazed by the powerful warriors and Haraku's fearsome pets. Florum discovered that Haraku was not an ordinary human, and she learned of his extraordinary capabilities. Florum settled into the village and became good friends with Lasty. During this time, a small slime caused trouble by drinking a whole barrel of wine. The girls wanted to punish him, but Florum intervened, saving the little slime from punishment. Instead, the little slime was allowed to join the party and enjoy alcohol with the girls from that day onwards. The slime was happy and content in Haraku's village. Meanwhile, Haraku finished his work and felt hungry, so he joined the girls for lunch. They prepared a vegetable hot pot, but Haraku desired seafood and mentioned his favorite dish, chunko, which combined seafood and vegetables. Lou and her little sister went to search for information, and the other girls were scared to learn that fish in their world were huge monsters. They couldn't believe that such dangerous creatures could be turned into a delicious stew. To satisfy Haraku's craving, they decided to visit a fish merchant in a nearby town in the demon area. A team flew to the port city to procure fresh seafood. Three days later, they returned with a manager named Top G. Michael from the Garun Company, who accompanied them. Michael displayed the fish caught by his company, and Haraku expressed interest in buying seaweed. 
Michael was eager to fulfill the order and proposed doing business with Haraku's village, becoming their official government purveyor. He suggested selling his fruits and vegetables to the outside world and showed the girls a list of his products. Haraku's village agreed to become Michael's new business partner. However, when Michael expressed interest in selling their alcohol, Lasty's intimidating presence scared him, and he wanted to leave. Despite the initial scare, Haraku was happy to engage in business with Michael and looked forward to a prosperous partnership in the future. Then we see Michael, who was relieved that he wasn't harmed by the villagers of Big Tree Village. Back in the city of Shahado, Michael was busy in his office when he received a visit from unregistered people who wanted to do business with him. Though he initially thought of turning them away, his intuition told him otherwise, so he welcomed his guests. Michael recognized Florem and Lasty's moon immediately. He knew that both came from powerful families, and upon seeing the precious fruits from Haraku's village, he was eager to trade with them. He promised to provide all the seafood they needed, and Floram and Lasty's moon were pleased with the deal. Michael decided to personally deliver the seafood, though he was apprehensive about venturing into the forest of death where Big Tree Village was located. Upon arriving at the village, Michael was anxious about meeting the strong villagers but soon learned that Haraku was a kind person. He couldn't believe he was getting the best deal of his life, but the experience left him shaking and exhausted. The following day, a dragon appeared for the third time, and Haraku wondered if it was related to Drime. The dragon attacked the village, provoking Haraku to retaliate with his almighty farming tool. Haraku managed to defeat the dragon, and the dragon girl admitted her defeat. Haraku was upset and demanded an explanation for the attack. Suddenly, Drime appeared and apologized to Haraku. He explained that Hakuren, the dragon girl, was his older sister. Hakuren revealed that she was curious about her niece's future husband, leading Haraku to discover that Drime had drunkenly revealed that Lasty's moon would marry him one day. Hakuren clarified that she had only wanted to test Haraku's strength and playfully engage with him. Haraku insisted that Hakuren repair the damage caused to the forest, and she agreed to do so. Hakuren got to know Big Tree Village and fell in love with it. After spending five days there, she heard about the game Mahjong, and the Dragon family suggested playing with a bet to add excitement. Lasty's Moon loved the idea and they convinced Haraku to play strip Mahjong with them. During the game, the dragons displayed their skill, and Haraku found himself nearly naked in his boxer shorts. Despite briefly suspecting them of cheating, Haraku realized it was unfounded as the dragons were friendly and fair. Determined to win, Haraku devised a plan but ended up losing to the dragons. The girls teased him, eager to see him naked. Meanwhile, the demon generals learned of another dragon living in Big Tree Village and became concerned. The demon lord Galgardo, however, seemed more preoccupied with his daughter's rebellious face. A few days later, Hakuren decided to stay in the village and took on the role of teaching the children reading, writing, and math, which she enjoyed. Later, Lamia girls approached Haraku, seeking his help, and he learned about his inferno wolf puppies. They stumbled upon a dungeon and unintentionally scared the Lamia girls. Haraku apologized and offered his delicious fruit to them. He proposed an exchange of goods, and they started working together. They set up a delivery service for Haraku's goods in their village, leading to the growth of Big Tree Village. Meanwhile, the demon princess sent three demons to rescue Floram, believing she was in danger. The next evening, Floram was busy with paperwork when her father, Bezel, visited. Bezel informed her that Princess Yuri was raising an army to attack. Floram was shocked that Big Tree Village was targeted despite having powerful warriors. Bezel tried to stop the attack, but the demon lord couldn't change his daughter's mind. They devised a plan to stop the attack and discovered that the demons were planning to strike the next day with 300 soldiers. The demon army attempted to invade Haraku's village the following day but was intimidated by the Lamia girls. The soldiers surrendered, and the three noble daughters were frightened too. Floram reported the incident to Haraku, who noticed the girls seemed scared. Floram explained they were new workers helping with paperwork and promised they wouldn't cause trouble again. Haraku inquired about the fourth girl on the throne, and Floram revealed she was a friend who wanted to work in the village for a while. Leaving the girls with Floram, Haraku advised them not to fool around anymore. However, Floram showed her friend the village big tree, and she became fascinated by the water mills. Suddenly, the Beastman boys appeared, and they all played together. The girls were then shown the apple trees, and Tia remarked on their noble-like behavior. The girl mentioned their plan to take over the village to enrich their kingdom, which angered Floram. In the afternoon, they encountered Lasty, and Yuri found her really cute. Meanwhile, the other girls were plotting to escape at night, fearing Haraku's pets. Their escape attempt failed, and they decided to stay in Haraku's village. The following day, Yuri played with one of Haraku's cute puppies, unaware of its true identity as a dangerous inferno wolf. Ram reassured her that the little puppies were harmless, allowing Yuri to play with them too. She learned about the beauty of Haraku's village and felt ashamed for attempting to attack such a wonderful place. Floram inquired why Yuri wanted to attack the village, and Yuri explained that she was concerned when Floram suddenly disappeared from the demon palace. 
During dinner, the girls continued to settle into Bait Tree Village, getting to know Haraku as a kind mayor. Haraku discovered that his wife, Lu, was having difficulty controlling her magic at the moment, but she assured him not to worry. In the following days, Yuri happily helped the little boys with farm work, and they enjoyed harvesting vegetables together. The peaceful days passed, and the little beastmen boys grew fond of her. Later, Yuri was picked up to return to the Demon Palace, leaving the boys saddened. However, Sina gifted her apples as a farewell present. Although she intended to go back to the Demon Palace, the three noble girls expressed their desire to stay in Haraku's village. They loved the delicious dishes prepared by Hiraku. Princess Yuri teleported back to the Demon Palace with Bezel. Several months went by, and winter arrived. Big Tree Village harvested an abundance of vegetables, and Lasty wanted to send some to her parents. Hakuren also wanted to share vegetables with her parents, and Hiraku learned more about the dragon's powerful family tree. Lasty carried the harvested vegetables to her parents, helping Michael to fight a fish monster along the way and bringing meat for Hiraku's hot pot. Similarly, Hakuren brought vegetables to her parents and introduced a group of Dark Elves led by Yata Big Tree Village. Haraku welcomed them and arranged a place for the Dark Elves to stay. The next day, the girls attempted to hunt down their own food to avoid burdening Haraku. However, the monsters were too strong, and Haraku reassured them that they didn't need to hunt monsters. Ya noticed Haraku's interest in pottery from his designs and offered to help him. She made perfect pottery, impressing everyone. Later, Tia and the elves reported the discovery of a new dungeon, exciting the Inferno Wolves who were eager to explore it. Meanwhile, Hiraku enjoyed the men's bath in the second bathhouse he had built. However, the mischievous Beastman boys joined him in the bath, leading to a humorous incident. Outside, the three classy girls plotted to peek at Hiraku while he bathed, but Flowerin caught them and punished them. In the evening, the elves returned from the dungeon and reported encountering a valuable, bloodthirsty viper inside. Ya explained that the viper's meat was highly valued among elves as it enhanced a man's RIS to improve the chances of having children. Months passed, and winter returned. Hiraku remained concerned about his wife, Lu, who had been unwell for a long time. However, Lu assured him that he didn't need to worry. Suddenly, Sina noticed that Lu had developed a liking for sour food lately. Hiraku soon learned that his wife, Lu, was pregnant, and they were expecting a child together. The Riz farmer was thrilled about becoming a father, and he eagerly looked forward to their future as parents. In the following months, everyone enjoyed the pleasant weather while working in the fields. Hiraku began his day with stretching exercises and, being concerned about Lu's pregnancy, he constantly checked on her well-being. He was overwhelmed by the thought that Lu would be the mother of his child and felt immense excitement for their upcoming baby. Meanwhile, the maids in the household prepared breakfast. Hiraku, being an early riser, was considerate of the maids and decided to sleep in a bit longer to let them rest. During breakfast, he learned that Flora hadn't slept well as one of her experiments failed. After breakfast, an angel reported to Hiraku that his inferno wolf, Kuro, had successfully defeated all the monsters that attacked the village. Hiraku then went to tend to his pets and plants. He noticed that his field was under attack by garden pests but easily handled the situation with his almighty farming tool. Hiraku took pride in his delicious vegetables and continued to care for his village. He introduced the idea of having lunch, which everyone loved, although initially some were hesitant due to their past experiences of living in poverty and not having enough food. Nonetheless, they appreciated Hiraku's decision and embraced the additional meal. After a busy day's work, Hiraku spent time with his pups and planted beautiful flowers around the village. He also crafted toys for the children, ensuring everyone in the village was cared for and content. After that, Hiraku made wooden swords for the maids and lizards men who were dedicated to their workout routines to maintain their figures and keep wearing their cute maid dresses. Inspired by their dedication, Hiraku decided to try some workout too, but he quickly became tired. A girl showed him some skills, and he used his almighty farming tool to destroy a tree trunk. In the afternoon, he was served a new dish, which he found a bit weird. The maids explained that they didn't want to waste food, but Hiraku found the dish too sweet for his taste. However, Lasty and her aunt, the dragon girl, liked the new dish. Later, Hiraku received a letter from the demon princess, Yuri, expressing her admiration for Zabatan's fashion clothes. After finishing his meal, Hiraku relaxed in the bathhouse he had built for men, grateful for his new life and friends. The next morning, he visited the dwarves who were busy making alcohol. Donovan, the hardworking man, impressed Hiraku with his dedication to home-brewed liquor. Donovan asked if they could plant more grapes, and Hiraku began devising a plan to expand their fields. Suddenly, Sina appeared with news of a strange man in their village. Hiraku was startled by the unknown intruder, but Lu recognized him as Vargraf, the progenitor of vampires. Vargraf congratulated Lu on her pregnancy and revealed that he has been alive for 4,000 years, regularly deleting his memories to avoid boredom. He apologized for invading the village but was drawn to the presence of a god statue. 
Throughout these events, Haraku cherished his new life, appreciating the dedication of his friends, the beauty of the village, and the joy of building connections with others. Despite encountering challenges and unexpected visitors, he remained grateful and content with the life he had created in Big Tree Village. However, Haraku discovered that in his past life, he had met God when he was reborn. Similarly, Vargref had been given a second life as a vampire. Vargref revealed that he had attempted to create a statue of God, but never succeeded in making a perfect one. Haraku noticed Vargref's desire for the statue and couldn't part with it. To appease him, Haraku offered to create another statue. In the end, Haraku gifted the statue to Vargref's grandfather, who was deeply grateful for the thoughtful gesture, and visited a church to display the statue. At the church, Haraku was warmly welcomed by an old friend and shared the story behind the new statue. In gratitude for the gift, the priest decided to give Haraku a piano. Although Haraku sneezed inexplicably, the joy of the piano brought happiness to his home. They placed the piano in the dormitory, and the three demon noble girls expressed their interest in learning to play. They were hesitant to use the expensive piano, so Haraku ordered a cheaper one for their practice. The girls enjoyed playing the piano together daily, even though Haraku secretly hoped they would stop playing at night. As spring passed and summer arrived with scorching heat, Haraku harvested fresh vegetables while Lu provided a refreshing lunch with ice-cold drinks. Haraku was concerned about Lu's well-being during her pregnancy, but she reassured him that everyone was taking good care of her. Lu expressed her sadness at not being able to drink alcohol during pregnancy, and all the girls decided to give up alcohol until the baby was born as a sign of support. As time passed, the bond between Haraku and his friends grew stronger, and they continued to enjoy life in Big Tree Village, cherishing each moment and supporting one another through joy and challenges. The anticipation of Lu's upcoming baby added excitement and happiness to their lives, and they looked forward to the future with optimism and gratitude for the wonderful community they had created together. They asked Haraku to refrain from selling their alcohol as they felt it would be insensitive to drink without Lu. Haraku assured them that they could continue aging the wine to improve its taste. In the following days, the dwarves seemed sad, thinking that the girls didn't like their alcohol. Haraku clarified the misunderstanding, and their spirits were lifted. Donovan resumed his work, and everything went back to normal. As the weeks passed and the weather turned hot, the villagers enjoyed the pleasant climate in Big Tree Village. Haraku made sure to check on his pregnant wife, Lu, regularly, and she reassured him that everything was fine each time. Lu shared that Tia and the angels had given her a beautiful ice flower, which helped keep her cool during the heat. Suddenly, a dark elf appeared, bearing a gift for Lu. Lu was delighted and expressed her gratitude. More villagers followed, bringing Lu numerous gifts. Everyone wanted to show their love and support, which overwhelmed Lu with their generosity. Despite the abundance of gifts, Haraku and Lu felt grateful for having such kind-hearted friends. One day, as they admired the gifts, Lu felt dizzy and noticed a hammer among the presents. Sensing that their baby wanted to meet the world and play with the beautiful girls, they prepared for the upcoming birth. Haraku eagerly waited at home, hoping for a healthy and safe delivery. While waiting, Haraku dozed off under his favorite tree. The next morning, he hurried to Lu when he learned she had given birth to a healthy baby boy. Overjoyed, Haraku held his newborn son in his arms, feeling an overwhelming love for the precious gift of life. Then, Haraku gazed at his baby and was filled with awe at the realization that he had become a father. Lu and Haraku cherished their time together as a new family, and they named their son Alfred, who inherited the almighty R.I.S. power. A week passed since Alfred's birth, and everyone adored the little baby. Reflecting on his joyful memories with his friends and the support they offered during Lu's pregnancy, Haraku felt grateful. He decided to show his appreciation to the villagers and wanted to give them something in return. Haraku created coins and distributed them to the villagers, allowing them to use the money to buy goods without having to seek his permission. Although it was just a trial run, Haraku planned to introduce a real currency later. The villagers embraced the new system, exchanging coins for their desired items, and had special requests that Haraku fulfilled, making toys for the children. During a celebratory party for Alfred's birth, everyone was in high spirits. Flora, finally able to drink again, joined the merriment. Donovan brought an exclusive wine to toast the baby's arrival. While enjoying the festivities, Lou abstained from alcohol as she was still breastfeeding Alfred. Donovan thoughtfully saved her a bottle of wine. Amidst the celebrations, the Demon Palace knew about Alfred's R.I.S. power and proposed a future marriage between Alfred and Princess Yuri. Back in the village, the villagers continued their work together, and the angels found people in need whom they wished to welcome into Big Tree Village. They considered building a second village to accommodate newcomers and expand their community. They cherished every moment with their son, Alfred, as they looked forward to a promising future in their growing community of Big Tree Village. This bring an end to our anime. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel, Annie Explainer.